video we are going to discuss about Marshall algorithm to find transitive closure it is based on the dynamic programming method it is a continuation of Floyd's all pair shortest path algorithm it's a very simple algorithm the objective of algorithm is to find the transitive closure of a relation what is transitive closure we'll see the example this is the graph this is the adjacency matrix of the graph what is adjacency matrix? This is the directed graph. There is no weight is given. So if there is a path between two edges. We are going to in mention it as a 1. Okay. So first 1 is having direct edge to the node 3. So this is 1. This is 2. This is 3. And this is 4 as well as this is 1, 2, 3, 4. So 1, 2, 3 there is a direct edge so I am indicating by 1 and 2, 2, 1 I am having direct edge indicating by 1 and 2, 2, 4 having direct edge indicating by 1. From 3 there is no outgoing edge so all are 0 and 4 to 2 we are having in uh, direct edge so 4 to 2 we are indicating by 1 so this is the adjacency matrix now we have to find the transitive closure for this graph by using the, this matrix so how we are going to find so we are seeing here 2 to 1 is connected 1 is connected to 3 so I can say that there is an indirect path between 2 to 3 via 1. So I am saying that there is a path between 2 to 3 indirect path. So I am going to change 2 to 3 is 1. Similarly, is there uh, any other path available from 2 to other node? 2 to 1 is direct path is there. 2 to 2. We will find 2 to 4 is direct path is there. Again 4 to 2 is again path is there. It is like a loop. So there is we can say indirectly 2 is connected to 2. So I am going to change this 0 into 1 because 2 is connected to 2 through the 4. From 3 there is a no outgoing edge so we cannot say there is a, any path and uh, we will take the 4. 4 to 1 we will see 4 to 2 is connected 2 to 1 is connected. So I can say 4 to 1 there is a path. Okay, I, I hope you understand. So I am going to change 4 to 1. There is a direct path is there. Then 4 to 2 is path is there. It is already 1. What about 4 to 3? 4 to 2 is connected. 2 to 1 is connected. 1 to 3 is connected. So there is an indirect path available from 4 to 3. So I am going to change this as a 1. What about 4 to 4? Yes, 4 to 2 is connected. 2 to 4 is connected. So we can see there is a loop over in this edge so 4 to 4 is connected so this matrix is called as a transitive closure so this is what we have to find we have to find the all the all the paths in the given graph and we have to change the matrix like this okay this is what I have done over here so this is easily we can do by manual but we are going to follow the dynamic programming method to solve this program so we will see this formula. So here RK is nothing but the matrix. RK minus 1 is also matrix. What is RK minus 1? That is a previous matrix. RK is current matrix. So the current matrix is depends on the previous matrix value. That is a meaning. So the current matrix we are taking the position I comma J. We have to check the previous matrix I comma J. If the previous matrix i comma j is 1 means we can leave as it is we no need to change. If the previous matrix i comma j is not 0 then we have to check any intermediate path between i to j via any node k. Okay so here I am saying telling again so we are checking the previous matrix i comma j if it is previous matrix i comma j is 1 then we are going to leave that one as it is in the new matrix 
if the previous matrix i comma j is zero means we are going to check the intermediate node any intermediate node k if there is a path between i to k then if there is any path between k to j then we can say there is a path between i to j so if it is so what we are going to do in the new matrix we are going to change it as a one that is a concept okay so we will see the example so this is the example we are going to solve this is the digraph they have given this is the equivalent adjacency matrix this is the transitive closer that is the answer of this matrix and how we are going to do by using this two rules we are going to follow what is this two rule if the element in row i and column j is 1 in r k minus 1 it remains 1 in r k as i told already the previous matrix i and j value is 1 means we have to leave 1 as it is if the element in row i and column j is 0 it is not 1 if it is 0 in the previous matrix and it can be changed in new matrix as a 1 if and only if the element in i and column k and the element in j in column j and row k both are 1 so we will see this clearly so this is the previous matrix in the previous matrix when there is the 1 if there is a 1 is there we no need to bother we can keep the 1 in the new matrix as it is like this if it is 0 we will take this example here 0 is there i comma j is 0 this is i this is j i comma 0 j is 0 we have to follow this rule to change how we are going to follow element in its row i and column k so this is row i this is column k we have to see the row i and column k value and column j and row k so this is the column j and this is the row k we have to see this two value if two these two values are zero this value as well as this value is zero means what we can do we can change i comma j into one okay this is what the rule 2 says okay you will see the example you will understand very clearly so this is the diagram this is the adjacency matrix first we will take the r0 as the adjacency matrix so this adjacency matrix is taken as a r0 and now i have to find the r1 so how i am going to find by using first row and first column I am going to derive the not using I am going to keep the first row and first column as it is in the R1 I am going to change the remaining values these values in the R1 I will repeat uh, again I am going to keep the first row and first column in the R0 as it is I am going to change this value in R1 so how I am going to change if it is 0 I have to check this value and this value if both are 1 I am going to change this as a 1 otherwise I am not going to change so here I cannot change here this is 0 so I have to check this value and this value if both are 1 I can change but both are not 1 so I am not going to change here already 1 is there if it is 1 is there as per rule 1 leave as it is then go to the next value it is 0 but here we have to check this value and this value both are not 1 so leave as it is this is 0 both are 0 leave as it is this is 0 both are 0 leave as it is this is 0 check this value here it is 1 here it is 1 so both are 1 so we can change into the 1 the next value is 1 leave as it is next is 0 so we have to check this value and this value so both are not 1 leave as it is so we will get the resultant matrix is R1 what is the change in R1 we have got the one new one value now based on this value R1 we are going to change the we are going to derive the R2 so when you are deriving the R2 this will go to the next column okay I am not going to change the column B I am not going to change the column sorry 
uh, I'm not going to change the column B. I'm not going to change the row B. Remaining value I'm going to change. So in the R2, I'm going to ch check the remaining values. So here it is a zero. We have to check these two value. It is both are not zero. So leave as it is. Then take this value, this and this both are not one. Leave as it is. For this value, we have to check this and this both are one. So we have to change it into one. So this value I am going to change it into one. Why? Because these two values are one. Now I have to take this value. For this value, I have to take this and this and this. Both are zero, leave as it is. For this value, both are zero, leave as it is. For this value, zero, one, one, leave as it is. Then we have to go for this one. It is already one. Uh, leave it here. Already one. Leave it here. Zero. Shall we check? Can we change? Yeah. This is one. This is one. Both are one. So, I am going to change it into 1. So this is the, you can see, this is changed into 1. This is changed into 1. So R2 we have find. Next, we have to find the R3 based on R2. So we are moving the row, the box, this box, next column and next row. So again, we are going to see this value. Uh, check this value. Both are 0, leave as it is. 1, leave as it is. Here 1 leave as it is here 0 both are 0 leave leave it as a 0 here both are 0 leave it here already 1 leave as it is here 1 1 1 leave as it is so we will get the R3 as the same there is no change now we have to find the R4 why R4 see remaining one row one column and one row is there we have to check that one so we are moving the box we are finding the R4. Uh, now I am checking for this value. It is 0 and this 2 or 1. So I can change this as a 1. And for this also 1 leave as it is. For this both values are 1 and leave and sorry change it as a 1. For this value this value this value we have to check both are 1 so change it into the 1 for here we have to check this and this both are 1 change into the 1 so for here this and this both are 1 change into 1 and here so here it is 0 so anyway one value will become 0 we cannot change anything so the resultant matrix you can see this is changed 0 to 1, 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 this is changed 0 to 1. So this is the resultant transitive matrix. What? This R4 is the result. This R4 is the resultant transitive matrix. This algorithm using the formula as we had seen in the previous slide and the time complexity is the N cube. Okay, so what is our aim? For a given graph, we are finding the adjacency matrix. From this one, we are finding the all paths in the particular matrix. So these are the all paths in the particular matrix. As I shown the output here, result here. This is the result we have achieved by using the dynamic programming. Thank you.